You know, freedom of speech is a bit like polyamory. It sounds good in theory. You get to go indoor rock climbing and have not one but two spotters. How safe is that? There's enough people to have board game nights without having to call anyone from outside your house. It's all well and good until someone else ends up f***ing your wife. You get the analogy, right? How many times have you heard someone go on and on about how they support free speech, only for them to completely spaz out when you post that they're part of a secret cabal of the files on your Rumble account? My dude, can you stop being fucking ableist? The correct term is intellectually challenged p files. See? You see? You can't say anything deliberately inflammatory anymore, especially with this whole rise of anti-Semitism narrative, which is getting beyond a parody. I haven't really done many videos on the Gaza war because what the f can I do here? In fact, let's have a go. I'll try right now. <clears throat> Israel, you better stop right now or I'm gonna have to make two videos on you. Also, I've been paid large sums of money not to make videos about this by the Israeli lobby. That's right, they sent out big shot Hollywood man Michael Kuzak to pay me off, but I said, Michael, please keep your money. You know where I stand, wink. Anyway, that gag is the entire point of this video, which is that with one throwaway line, I'm gonna be accused of being anti-Semitic, which to that I say, just wait till the end of the video where I reveal the secrets of the Talmud. Now, if you've watched any videos on this subject in the last six months, you'll know that this is the part of the video where you expect me to put on a bunch of disclaimers about I don't support Hamas, I don't support terrorism, no. I'm sick of the political media class's bizarre ritual where before they get into the substanceless platitudes that they're all keen to recite, they really like this vapid obligatory act of continually calling on each other to condemn Hamas, condemn all the bad things, condemn Lenny Riefenstahl, to which I refuse to do. It wasn't just a triumph of the will, it was a triumph of the cinema. I mean, if this whole Drake Kendrick beef has taught us anything, separate the art from the artist. Still, size seven shoes? Gross. What is with this whole condemnation ritual? You think they're gonna hear Piers Morgan and think the guy from Britain's Got Talent condemns us? I thought the Western media class was on our side! I mean, just about anyone commenting on it, talk about main character syndrome. Yes, this war on the other side of the planet is about me and how I feel about 19 year olds holding up signs at universities I never have to visit. Social media takes, this one included by the way, they're insufferable enough. But the mainstream presses, how do they always manage to be more insufferable than TikTok? That's a true accomplishment. They've managed to turn the slaughter of tens of thousands of innocent people within the span of months into horrific development. The conflict in the Middle East finally turns ugly. A shocking rise of slurs written in paint markers in public toilets. Want an example? Check out former Treasurer of Australia Josh Frydenberg's career comeback. Oh, you haven't heard. After getting unseated last election, he's taken a bit of a break from politics to work on his true masterpiece. What Apocalypse Now was to Coppola's career, that's what this is gonna be for Josh Frydenberg's burgeoning filmmaking career. We have a regular Lenny Riefenstahl on our hands, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, Sky News Productions present. Never again, the fight against anti-Semitism, Tuesday, 7 p.m. on Sky News. How weird is it hearing the Sky News voice make ABC points? I haven't watched it because this wasn't out at the time of filming this, unfortunately, but talk about spoilers in the trailer. Look at this all-star cast. They even dusted off Howard's coffin for a cameo. I do see why he got four terms. He has a really good, sad, sentient chimp face. He always looks like a chimp dying, weakly putting his hand out to his carer for some last assurance. Oh, no, it's too... Uh, I'm crying. I'm gonna cry. Oh, that was so sad. And you could tell the chimp was like a bit demented as well. No, I'm not gonna show it. Why not? I, I can't, I'll cry. No, but you don't have to be in, like, it's just gonna be in the video. Alright, yeah, just show it in the video then. As a Holocaust survivor, what would you tell the Prime Minister of Australia? Lead, do something. Stand up. How we respond will determine the kind of Australia we will be. Damn. They finally figured out a way for people to listen to a full sentence from Josh Frydenberg without falling asleep. Reverb. The same reason shit Triple J bands are popular. We already know what this whole doco is going to be about. It's so common at this point, it's almost as hacky just to point it out, but I will point it out. 
Weaponizing the phrase anti-Semitism to justify mass killings of people for their great crime of being born where you want to put a soda stream factory. I mean, that's not entirely fair. It also looks like this doco's about pretending to be afraid of non-binary international studies students yelling from the river to the sea. I'm not going to morally grandstand on the dishonesty of that tactic. There's enough people on Piers Morgan trying to yell that point over the top of three other panellists every night, but... I will offer some public relations advice to Israel. If you want an effective propaganda point about these student protesters, don't scream Jews everywhere are under attack, especially in Australia, because the most low T segment of society have mustered just enough energy to slowly shuffle down university campuses. No one's buying that you're afraid of the UTS arts department, but you know they're not anti-Semitic. They're the wokest motherfuckers on earth. They wouldn't even get a Jewish accountant. They'd be too scared of playing into the stereotype. Just call them cringe and focus on how handsome Benjamin Netanyahu was when he was younger. Might be a war criminal, but I'd let him break my rules of engagement. <laughs> but just calling them cringe would require a level of honesty and truth, and you know what they say about war. Truth is the first casualty, and that means that Truth was probably the name of some Palestinian farmer in the 1940s. But see, look, honestly, just saying that they're cringe, Frydenberg, I've already made a far more incisive criticism of pro-Palestinian protesters than you. And as difficult as that is, because give them a break, at least they're calling for the end to mass killings, not just crying about mean words. In fact, let's start a bet. How many minutes into this documentary before someone makes the really annoying point of I'd like to see how these LGBTQI plus college kids do in Gaza, they'd be begging for a passport to Israel. Because you can say the converse. Hamas militants are thankful for their international support from college kids. Hmm, well, I'd like to see them survive not getting cancelled at Columbia. But also... It's the height of hypocrisy that you have these supposed free speech warriors, the Murdoch press and Josh Frydenberg responsible for this banger. Their entire mirage that they have any ideology or morality is built around the premise that they defend free speech no matter what. And that all wisps away because some university students are being mean. What's new? A full decade decrying hate speech laws over and over, now demanding a slew of anti-hate speech laws. Huge restrictions on free speech. It's honestly terrifying, the ability of the media to turn everything, everything into a culture war that they bitterly fight day in, day out, and then switch sides the next day. How do these trained monkeys justify their little primate minds the thing that they were trained to do, writing for years, quote unquote quips like, Well, I hate these hate speech laws. Does that mean I go to jail too? More clarity is needed. Oh, the man that feeds me wants to take the exact opposite side? Well, hmm, I can't use the words hate speech. That would be too obvious. Um... I know, I'll sub it out for hate preaching. Yes, this conflict does have a religious undertone and oops, I forgot to put the hyphen in one of them. Ah, well, who cares? Certainly not me. Like Australia's media, I, I cannot say this enough to you. Can you stop being so dumb? It's fucking incredible that you have the same presenters you see on Sky News night after night rolling their eyes. Well, it's ridiculous, Andrew. You challenge these uni students' worldview at all and you're immediately accused of being a Nazi. Now pretending these sabre demics are brown shirts marching down Berlin in the 30s all because there's some graffiti on a toilet. That's what they want to focus on. I don't know how you haven't figured this out yet. Even the Israeli government has had to change tact in their PR. But the old system of just not showing the bodies doesn't work in the age of TikTok. You can't play the victim, especially when your highest rated YouTube videos are calling out the lefties for having a victim complex. Wait, so we're not finishing off the video. Like, you know, there's still more on the script. Yeah, that, I'm not reading that last sentence. That's too fucked. I'm not doing it. What? It's too, it's so, too so scary. It's not going to end. You're not even finishing it. Well, this whole time you've been sitting there saying that everything that I'm saying is too red hot and then the one thing that I think is too red hot, you're like, yeah, nah, fuck it, leave it in. I'm not fucking saying that. No way. <laughs> 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 right, this video doesn't have an ending. <laughs>